I prefer to use Project for the Web inside of Microsoft Teams so that we also get the conversations and activity feed for the project along with the files, which sit in SharePoint on the back end, of course, with version control and all the usual SharePoint features. OneNote for capturing meeting minutes, vendor conversations, and so on. Easy access to status reporting and roadmaps if you're using those. Additional project management features through Power Apps extensions. And of course, the tasks on the project. Project for the Web uses the Microsoft 365 groups to put all the infrastructure in place, including a SharePoint document library, OneNote, a shared mailbox, and calendar basically allowing the members of the group to collaborate and share information. There are three different ways to interact with the tasks on your project. The grid view, board view, and timeline. Here we have all the tasks laid out in a grid view. There's the task name, who it's assigned to, duration, effort remaining, dependencies, percent complete, start and finish. Those are just the ones we're currently showing and there are more over here. If I open up a single task, we can explore more of the functionality. This task is to test the module integration, and I can see that it's part of system testing. We can see who's assigned to the task. There's a description to ensure we have a shared understanding of the work. Then start, finish, duration, percent complete as you would expect. We can organize the work into buckets and add detailed checklist items to help track progress at a more granular level inside the task. Then there's completed effort, remaining effort, and total effort. If you add any local custom fields to your project, those will also show up here. On the right, we have the dependencies and attachments. These attachments can reference the team files in your SharePoint document library, as you would expect. All in all, I think this is a very solid task experience today with more functionality coming in the near future. All three views come with the ability to filter the tasks. We can filter for finish date, for example, those tasks that are running late, progress to see tasks that are not started, in progress or completed, buckets to filter for marketing tasks in this example, critical path, and in the timeline view, these tasks will also be highlighted in red, as you may be used to from the desktop client. And finally, assigned to, which is a great way to see what each team member is working on. In the board view, we get a Kanban-like experience. The buckets here are defined for each project, so you can make them whatever you want. As you would expect, we can drag and drop tasks between columns. And in addition to buckets, we can view the tasks by assigned to, progress, and finish date. The timeline is great for a more visual view of the project. When we mouse over a task, it highlights the dates at the top. And marking a task complete here gives us that very satisfying <laughs> ding. We can interact with the task bars like extending them to increase the duration of a task, move a task by dragging it, or create dependencies between tasks. And the timeline can be exported to a PDF file as well. As you can tell, Microsoft Project for the Web is very capable of managing tasks on projects. As I mentioned earlier though, it's really the combination of Project for the Web, the Power Platform, and Teams that makes this an enterprise solution and a true platform for PPM. With Power BI providing the automated status report for an individual project, as well as a roll-up of all projects into a portfolio dashboard for visibility at an executive level. There's a great Power BI contact pack available for a Project for the Web and you can access that from the link in the description below. With Power Apps, organizations can extend the functionality around Project for the Web 
with things like risks, issues, changes, decisions, lessons learned, programs, portfolios, ideation, proposals, resource management, strategy, just about anything you can think of through this low-code, no-code business solutions platform. Power Automate then enables notifications for things like project requests and variances in the portfolio. It also integrates nicely with the approvals app in Microsoft Teams to route key decisions and approvals to sponsors and executives. You've already seen some examples of how Project for the Web integrates into Microsoft Teams. Here's another one. We can now have conversations about tasks with at mentions for notifications in the activity feed. Microsoft is investing heavily in both the Power Platform and Project for the Web. Other recent enhancements that we haven't covered today include the availability of Project for the Web and Roadmap in the Government Cloud, the ability to import an MPP file from the Project Desktop client, copy an existing project to use that as a starting point, personal notifications when I'm assigned to a project, roadmap, or a task, the ability to assign tasks to non-group members, which then adds them to the group for collaboration, support for fixed duration, fixed effort, and fixed unit scheduling, and API support for extensibility. And there are more enhancements coming, including schedule templates, priority field, labels on tasks, a new charts view to visually assess the progress of the work, and the ability to add guest users to projects. Project for the Web on the Power Platform is much easier than Project Online ever was. We deploy clients in under a week with our best practices template solution, Sensei IQ, and then we spend anywhere from a few weeks to a few months tailoring to the specifics of that client's organization. We have lots of great resources in the description of this video, and you can also reach out to Sensei via email to get additional information or request a formal needs assessment and PPM uh, maturity roadmap review.